Hello. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Blake Ahrens, an elder here at Rooftop and also chair of the Next Steps Capital Campaign. And two Februarys ago, the people of Rooftop gathered to kick off the Next Steps Campaign with the building ball. Anybody go to the building ball? Show your hands. <laughs> so do you remember the empty table at the building ball? For those of you who weren't there, in the middle of our, our banquet room that the people of Rooftop were gathered around was a table that was really beautifully set. I think Heather Gain and my wife made this table and nobody sat there uh, intentionally because that table represented the vision of the capital campaign. Uh, it represented the why. It represented all the people uh, that aren't coming to Rooftop because we didn't have space for them. So uh, that was the vision of the campaign and the campaign ends formally next week but it's to help Rooftop take its next step towards reaching people for Christ. And the elders believe that the next step for Rooftop is a larger facility, hence the campaign to raise some money. And while we thought we'd have been in a facility by now, to be honest, uh, it's still our next step. And our capital campaign has put us in a much better position uh, to take that next step with, drumroll, $304,819 collected. So, woohoo! Yeah. Balloons, cake, all great ways to celebrate that, right? So thank you, thank you, thank you. The people of Rooftop have sacrificed greatly for this. Uh, people have given up vacations, people have sold cars, people have done extra work on their side and, and just generally cut back. So I know that folks have sacrificed and 20 Rooftop families took their original pledge and then gave above and beyond that as they saw the vision for it and were in a position to do so. So here's a look at the specific numbers. We had $289,069 collected from pledges. We had $15,750 from unpledged money, mostly fundraisers. So if you remember working the, uh, the concession stand at Bush Stadium or that massive yard sale where we sold everything, including the church's TV, uh, <laughs> one of our finer moments. Uh, but. Uh, there's still a fair number of pledges outstanding, so even though we're formally wrapping this thing up, if you still have a pledge that you haven't met, uh, people that, that came later maybe made a multi-year pledge and they haven't reached the end yet. Um, I know some other people are waiting on stock and, and various other things, so please continue to give. Um, but now that we've given all this money, you're probably asking, well, what about the building? Uh, it's been over two years and uh, we're, we're still here. Uh, you all drove to Afton this morning, not to some other place. And so we wanted to give you a brief building update. We'll talk a little bit more about this at the State of the Roof on Friday. So come there. I imagine during the Q&A there'll be some more details. But the truth is, we're just still searching. Uh, I wish it was a more exciting update than that. But finding a building for us is a function of, number one, availability. Uh, there just haven't been buildings on the market uh, for us to even purchase. And then two, money. Hence the, the Campo campaign. So continue to pray for both of those, that God would uh, provide a building for us and the funds to uh, reach it. But for now, we're doing our best to be faithful to the vision that God's given us. Uh, we're trying to be faithful, uh, actively faithful, with what we've got right here at Afton and reach as many people as we can. Uh, and we want you to be faithful uh, in your own lives with what God's given you. And so Rooftop Lead Pastor, Dr. Matthew R. Herndon, has more to say on that. Uh, it is our, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So without further ado, uh, Dr. Herndon. Thank you, Monsignor Blake <laughs> Morning. My name is Matt. I'm the lead pastor here at Rooftop. Yeah, kids, you can hear me. Yeah. yeah. Boy, that makes me feel wonderful. Okay. Oh, they're mostly Blake's kids, and they had to leave after he was done. Oh, Drew, where are you going? Yeah. Back to the kids' room? Where you belong, right? <laughs> Tit for tat, baby. So I want, to welcome, I want to welcome you here to Rooftop. Also, I want to thank you for um, giving so generously to this capital campaign. Uh, I know, like Blake, so many of you have sacri sacrificed so much. I also want to acknowledge sort of the weird ending of the capital campaign here. As Blake acknowledged, we had hoped to have a different ending. We had hoped, hoped actually to be in a new facility by now. So it's weird on that count. 
It's also weird because we sort of fell significantly short of our goal. Our goal was $400,000, and we'll end up having raised just over $300,000 of, of that, which is not pocket change, but it's not what we thought we could raise, and we actually still think we could have raised that. To make this even weirder, we were actually trying to buy a building last year. You know this. We had our eyes on a building that we we're going to try to buy, but we, we fell short by about $100,000. So it's hard to escape the thought that if we had, you know, realized the vision that we, you know, we thought we could do and realized our goal that we, we wouldn't be here this morning. We would be in our new facility. So what are we celebrating here this morning then? Who brought the balloons? That was me. Um, well, I am not being insincere when I tell you that we are celebrating a ginormous step forward towards our goal, which we eventually intend to get to. Our goal here as a congregation is still to go, grow, and sow. We want to go so we can meet a larger place so that we can grow and attract more people and then sow and start some other churches. That is still our goal. And $300,000 is not pocket change. That's going to help us realize our goal at some point in the future. We don't know how, we don't know when, but just like we're here celebrating heaven, even though we're not there yet, we're celebrating the future, that's what we're doing right now with this Next Steps, Cap Next Steps Capital Campaign celebration. We're celebrating the, the, the future. But more importantly, uh, this campaign isn't really about the building anyway, and we've tried to communicate that over the past year or so. This building campaign, this campaign rather, is about growing as followers of Christ. And this morning we're celebrating just how much that's happened because the truth of the matter is that we're all Americans and we're all materialists. And as American materialists, we're all addicted to money. And being addicted to money, we are less happy and we are less effective as God's servants. And part of this capital campaign has been to give us the opportunity to learn to give and sacrifice so that we are not just happier, but we are more effective to what God wants to do in this city in this world. And this morning we're celebrating the fact that dozens and dozens of rooftoppers unloaded $300,000 worth of cares and burdens from their bank accounts. We demonstrated to God uh, that we are that much more committed to what he's doing here in the world. We demonstrated to God that we are that much more committed to our own salvation. We demonstrated to God that we are that much more committed to his church and even to this church. And as we committed ourselves to him, he committed himself to us. He has been very faithful to us through this entire campaign. I mean, did anybody die as a result of this capital campaign? Did anybody starve as a result of this capital campaign? Did anybody go broke as a result of this capital campaign? I know there's a few broke people out there, but as a result of this capital campaign. No, God provided for us. God even blessed us uh, incredibly. My, my family gave up thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stuff, vacation, food, beer, not thousands of dollars worth of beer, but a small portion of that, thousands of dollars worth of savings, and we're fine. We're completely fine. Not even that, we're blessed. We, we added an incredible amount to our eternal savings account. I don't know how that works, but it's what the Bible says happens. You give away more, and, and God secures more for you. We're blessed because of that, which sort of leads me to my next point. Hopefully those of us who have participated in this Next Steps campaign have learned something about the way God blesses the generous. That's what the Bible says. God blesses those who give. God blesses generous people. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, let me show you this verse, whoever sows sparingly, what happens? Reaps sparingly. Aww. But whoever sows generously, that's what I'm doing. I'm sowing generously reaps generously. That's, should have worked on that a little bit more. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. God blesses those who are generous. Uh, many of us have hopefully rediscovered that during this campaign, that if you give a lot, you get a lot. Maybe not materially, but certainly spiritually. And so my question for you then becomes, why stop now? I mean, if we know that God blesses those who are generous, then why stop now? I mean, sure, the capital campaign is over. I mean, you've met your obligation. There's no more to do. But knowing what we know about the way God wants to bless generous people in incredible ways, why would we just call it quits right now? In fact, here's my ask. 
here as your pastor, as your friend, as your leader, here's what I'm asking. Press on. Stay at it. Keep giving. If you were, more specifically, if you were giving to the capital campaign and were not giving a full 10% tithe to the church, which is what the Bible says God's people should be doing, then go ahead and make this the moment where you become a regular 10%er. Make this the moment, you know what, I'm going to give more regularly to the church starting now. If you were giving 10% tithe to the church, which, again, is what the Bible says you should be doing, then go ahead and tick that up a little bit. Transition that Next Steps campaign into an 11% tithe, a 12% tithe, a 13% tithe. I mean, you're not going to regret giving more to what God wants to do in your life. I mean, the reality is that in order for Rooftop to thrive and grow and succeed, we're going to need more regular tithers and givers anyway. In fact, you want to know a little bit of a secret? Okay, a little bit of a secret? All right. If, we, if, if the people of Rooftop had been giving 10% of what God gives to them, which is what the Bible says we should be doing, we would have never needed to do this capital campaign at all. The reason we did this capital campaign is because we don't have enough people who are giving regularly to what God should be doing. If the people, if even just the members of Rooftop had been giving 10% of what God gives to them back to God, we would already be in a new facility. We would have already hired a children's director serving your children. Erin Strogi would be already sleeping at night. <laughs> She's been working tirelessly as a volunteer in that role for years. Eventually, she's just going to fall over. We would have already secured her, her life. <laughs> we would have already hired a youth director. Uh, we might have already started another church and baptized dozens and dozens of more people. That's what Rooftop really needs here. Anyway, more regular givers, more regular tithers. So make this the moment, make this the opportunity where you say, okay, I, I wasn't really giving regularly, but I was giving to the capital campaign. I'm just going to move that over, and I'm going to be a regular giver. Or if you weren't giving regularly and you were giving the capital campaign, then say, now, now I'm going to give even more, 11%, 12%. Or if you weren't giving at all, make this the moment where you decide, I'm going to be a giver. I'm going to be a giver. I'm going to do what the Bible says. No one regrets giving. No one says, darn, I gave too much. You're not going to get to heaven and say, rats, I gave too much to worthy causes. I sacrificed too much. I'm sorry, God, that I was irresponsible with your money by giving away to your people. No one does that. God promises to bless overwhelmingly people who are generous. You might have heard this, for, this verse before, but I want to share it with you before we jump on into the rest of the service. To God's people, he says through the prophet Malachi, he says this, give the whole tenth, the whole tenth to the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this. You're not, you're not supposed to test God except here. It's the only time God says to test him. Test me in this. Put me to the test, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. Test him in that. See if he's lying. He's not. So that's my challenge. Think about it. Let's pray.